the video from size actually previewing some trainers that are going to pop out for april 2020 go through some of these actually i think this was actually a cool video that i actually went through some shoes that i like um size has done really well over i think the last couple of years um it feels as if they've made a concerted effort to bring in people that actually get the culture who are actually about it um they are doing collaborations that make sense um again size are an interesting place because you know they're a uh, nationwide retailer here in the UK if you're, if you're a US uh, person you'll probably be aware of it if you buy sneakers who's what size are but they tend to rest in an interesting position where they supply the sneaker heads right people who are on crooked tongues who are on sneaker talk who are on you know, facebook groups on facebook groups about trainers online and then they also appeal to the regular schmegular joe schmo who happens to pass by carnaby street see a fancy shoe in the window and wants to cop it or you know a celebrity or a football all those kind of people so it's a really weird mix of people they have in the shop so their collaborations always I feel as if like they are in a hard spot with collab because they always have to feed both audiences because I would imagine even though they might get a lot of traction from the blogs about the shoes they put out the actual people that buy them are just regular folk they're the ones that probably keep the lights on and allow them to make yeah they, they keep the lights on week by week or day by day buying just you know converses and nike and vans old schools and you know um adidas stan smiths and shit those people probably keep the lights on because they just go there and just pick up the regular smuggler trainers and then the sneaker heads the people into shoes they just kind of you know keep things ticking over but you have to you have to satisfy both audiences and you have to also make a shoe that can appeal to that regular joe and also appeal to the kid that's leaving comments on high beast um blog posts so it's a very interesting place to be but i think they do pretty well for all things considered and um this is kind of them highlighting some stuff that's going to be dropping in april 2020 so let's just skip ahead a little bit lower the sound so it's not too high let me see what they have available can you think of a better shoe that's come out this year than this it's hard it's so good isn't it? Lies, yeah. the new so that's the New Balance 992 made in USA. It's an absolutely beautiful shoe, great shape. I would say, from a sneakerhead point of view, I'd say probably the only shape that I'd prefer of this is probably the 991. I think it's a little bit better in terms of the sole. Maybe obviously, the made in UK versions are a lot better. Some of the colorways you get are a lot better as well. But in terms of what they're offering for a van, for a size consumer, it's incredible. You've got the quintessential um, gray colorway. You've got a nice sort of like tan mustardy colorway, which you don't really see too often from retailers. Usually a thing that they do in terms of collaborations. And then you've also got um, the classic black upper with the white midsole shoe. So really free um, classic colorways and a really nice model that's very versatile, can be worn in lots of different ways and just, just nicely done really. Nothing too crazy on them. 992, made in USA. I mean, this is one of my favourites from the whole 99 series. Obviously, the series started in 1982. Yeah. Uh, the rumour is a certain Steve Jobs took centre design over to Mr. Davis, and then it kind, of, it kind of went from there. As with anything you get from Made in USA, the quality's there. It's definitely something you need to pick up and see because the quality of the suede, the new book, and the materials on it, it's amazing. Like the so, it's going to launch first with the original colour, and there's a few more colours coming through. We've actually got those here as well. When it comes to new balance, I like that too. I like that new balance are deciding to drop the original grey colorway, as I said, made famous by Steve Jobs, and then iterate all the other crazies later on. I think a lot of brands do that nowadays because they know, for the most part, you want to get the initial bump from sneakerheads, right? You want them to wear that shoe often, and then once people's eyes get used to that model and that silhouette, you then introduce all the nutty colorways out after that. Even Balenciaga did it with the triple S's. They put out some standard colorways and then just flooded the market with fluorescence and clear fruit, clear see-through soles and shit later on down the line. Bunch of new shoes are set, especially the 99 series. The gray is the one in it. It's also, I mean, these are brilliant, don't get me wrong, but this is the color, this yeah, is the, the color that's synonymous with so the brand. Nice. And, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, like I said, I don't think there's going to be a better shoe this year. Or maybe one that we've done. But I remember last year when the V5 dropped, especially that grey one. I can't think of a shoe I want more. We're also getting the 1300. The shoe originally was conceived in 1985. Not really fine, but shoes. I think mostly because of the toe box. I think when you're looking down them and wearing them, they've sort of got this weird sort of like bulbous round shape. No matter how tight you tie your laces, they seem to kind of always kind of pop out on the sides. Um, I tend to think they probably suit people with smaller feet, I would say, from my experience. And then they have that weird sort of end cap thing that makes your foot go in as you're walking. It's sort of like a weird thing. I don't know how to describe it. It's sort of like a roll bar. Um, I don't find them comfortable at all, but, you know, 
is a classic shape. Originally it was so Let's just skip ahead a little bit on that one. Feel. The screen. So this is another one they've got. Like we says. were working on, on an NPC and bringing it back and it was back to front on the screen and that started the thought process. When it comes to Reebok we always look at it. Okay so this is I think it's similar to um, what what do they do? Well, did they even go up or do something like that? Well, they were back to front right? So this is a Reebok GL6 6000. GL6000 sorry. Reeboks I have no time for. I think I've said it before on the air loads of times but you know, I'm from a very sketchy part of East London where, for the most part, Reeboks are associated with NF, uh, <laughs> National Front, uh, BMP, right? So they don't they don't really have a great, um, I have great memories of looking at Reebok or wearing Reeboks. It just feels if, like anyone that did wear Reeboks that happened to be black was the kind of, you know, the bald headed sort of like cockney sort of sounding bloke that was, you know, a little bit whitewashed. You no, know, it was a little bit of a coconut, sorry, it was whitewashed. Um, yeah, so they don't necessarily have that appeal to me apart from obviously we've got classics and workouts. But again, you know, there's so many shoes out there. I don't think I'm missing anything out of my repertoire by not wearing Reeboks. I've never worn them ever in my entire life. And this was even back in the day when the really popular ones were the kind of high top ones with the strap on them. That was all like the workouts. No, Reebok classics with a strap on them. And then suddenly over, I don't know, the last 10 years, suddenly all the kind of artists, all the kind of wannabe contemporary artists from South London, wear white ones with white socks and black trousers and you know dirty nails and shit it become a little bit of a thing but i don't think they look good i've never thought they look good i thought they're probably one of the trash issues out there this gel 6000 looks great as a model but Reebok as a brand i think they've misstepped so many times the best thing they've probably done is a metcons already but apart from not metcons um the crossfit shoes they had they were not like metcons at nike i've got one they had but they were probably the best thing they did and they kind of fumbled the ball in that one as well so i'm just not really a fan really white shoe whether it be a workout or a club seat or something like that and we all do a really good premium iteration we just wanted to kind of do a bit of a, a twist on that a bit more storytelling we're actually working on a classic vintage runner it's the gl6000 and we thought what better way to tell a story on it than to use one of the original colors so the essentially the back to front and the way that the factory's almost misinterpreted the brief you see it on the outside it's really clean and that looks really premium but you got a little surprise you see the real dna of reebok so you'll see some of the details are changed and they're not what you expect. So the athlete shoe is usually the reverse of the label. That's on the okay, inside this enough. time. Cool. Also the kind of side tag that's usually on the inside of that tongue. Does, does Virgil get owed some royalties in that one? Everything's being flipped upside down, inside in. That's maybe a bit of a thing. They say it's because of what, 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 when you got it through the screen, but this might be a Virgil owing of things. Isn't it? it does look interesting to look at, but again, not for me. So I'll just yeah, fast forward that see. one. Secrets. And then we've got another one oh, here. What, what can we do in Easter? I mean, it, it was a weird conversation, I'll, I'll be honest with you. But we talk about Easter bunnies and stuff like that, and then we start talking about Easter eggs, the ones that are kind of hidden secrets within the shoe. It's themed on the Easter bunny, so you'll see the materials there really soft, hairy suede. This is pretty nice, actually, the model. Heel, the exposed not foam tongue. And it's just and it's in isolation. Too, so a get really nice mouth. looking shoe. How much are we going to give away? I think we'll give two or three things away because there's a lot hidden on this shoe. We actually said to the Puma team when we actually finally briefed the shoe, we want one thing yeah. hidden in the shoe or the box that even we don't know about. We've That's been trying to cool. find them. We've found about seven or eight things. Yeah. There's still more. We've not seen what's underneath there yet. I've come already am. Should we just go in and let's see what we're going to do? So there's been a lot of this in it. A lot of kind of cutaway. Maybe it's from the Jeff McFrederick era of vandals, but there's been a lot of this sort of trend where collaborations are um where they have a an outer layer that you can kind of peel away a layer that you can add stickers to or add velcro badges to you can burn you can add it again again i'm, I'm not too sure what the appeal of that sort of thing is about i just quite like you know really well done colorways and great paneling and good material choices because i'm just like that classic look but i guess some people want a bit of layery stuff on their shoes not necessarily a thing for me um i've seen it work really well with people kind of cinching the kind of reveal part, taking a light to it and burning some of the pieces away. But again, you know, I don't want to start being a, you know, I hate sneaker designers anyway. You know, the kind of people that replace panels with Python skin and shit. I think that stuff mostly looks garbage. So this kind of reminds me of that. And I don't necessarily want to do that. I want to buy the shoe and just wear it. And I don't want to have to kind of go home and start doing arts and crafts. But, you know, like as a model, it's pretty cool. Things. There's a lot of different so he's cutting away at there's the a lot of different puma sign or something okay you've got a bit of some bit different change on the certain things turby yes here's what it is trans, but then again it's on we the leave it as is actually i think the color it is is actually quite nice and then this of course the piece of resistance now i remember about a year ago i was in boston 
rummaging through one of the showrooms and finding a really early sample of this on the wall. As you wow. know, we're massive fans of the New Balance brand and a lot of the things we show you are archive projects, so stuff that we- So this is a 327 uh, size exclusive. And I think, uh, controversy I would say, I think this colorway doesn't really work that well with this model. I think this is a great example of colorways sort of ruining a model. I think if you saw the Casablancas that I might have talked about previously, they do a really good job of kind of accentuating some of the key features on that 327. See if I can get it up on here, because it's one to 327. And I think the colorway here that we've got at the moment from a size doesn't necessarily do it for me. And that's the danger, I think, sometimes. That's probably the reason why a lot of these brands are doing collaborations with loads of bells and whistles because it's quite hard to do a simple collab and make it work. You need to add some other, you know, crazy accruements onto it to make it a thing. So if you see the difference between this colorway and that colorway, you've got the, obviously you've got the with the Casablanca, you've got the addition of this sort of like two tone midsole where they've sort of like got this off white bit at the bottom and then a the pure white in the middle. You've got this kind of perforated upper, um, nice plush sort of like new back uppers. Uh, nice or well, new back paneling for the most part and mud guard and you've got this one here even this uh let me look at this white one here actually that one there looks pretty cool and classic right really nicely done and then you look at what they've done here with this one and it just looks a bit flat there's no real depth to it there's no feel no texture just a colorway that they kind of just look at something that you might design an id um again i'm sure it would do well for them but i just don't think it works well in that model i think it kind of that model calls for a few more classes and again maybe they couldn't do it because they already had an embargo on these sort of color schemes but the color that they have on there isn't the best i would say in my opinion but let's see what they have to say you know we're massive fans of the new balance brand and a lot of things we show you are archive projects so stuff that we've seen over the last decades and we've brought it back they've used their archive to essentially create something brand new everything on this shoe is amplified and exaggerated and just how we like it so you'll see how aggressive the tooling is and again how overt the branding is as well it's got a real dna of like a vintage kind of running shoe something that you would have seen around in the 70s or early 80s we wanted the shoe to do all the talking yeah. so we've actually just used some of our favorite archive vintage running colors we've seen over the years and there's actually a few little tweaks and changes so we've made sure this yeah, looks like the materials. ld100 isn't it the other one before that's like a nike colorway shoe and they're both probably nike colorway shoes i'm pretty sure colors we've seen over the years and there's actually a few little tweaks and changes so we've made sure the spec of the materials is as you'd expect of a project probably from 40 years ago similarly a lot of the inline versions have printed ends we've actually put material on the end okay as well, that's pretty that's pretty cool to know that i didn't know that also. so inline's gonna be printed which is gonna be weird isn't it what's that paneling on the side there's that mesh a printed end on that might end up cracking a bit so i wonder how they're gonna do that substantial and again like you saw on the comp 100 it's actually got that size logo on the footbed as well that's pretty cool so we're gonna round off this episode yeah i think that will stop it there i think the rest of it is some adidas that i'm not really fond of but yeah um, a pretty cool video to see um, what's coming for April. I think what they mentioned here, loads of stuff coming in. They're gonna drop. I'm assuming that'll be a little bit of good respite for people that you know suffering from a pandemic, have a little bit of a silver lining in your day by buying some new trainers. So definitely check out that video. I'll put it in the show notes again for you guys to watch for yourselves.